It's not uncommon to see wildlife here in central Illinois. You're bound to see geese or wild turkey wandering around yeah, town. Yeah, but what other types of game birds are you going to see? Well, we're going to introduce you to one here with a closer look at a critter uncaged. Dr. Julia Whittington's for the U Whittington for the U of I Wildlife Medical Clinic. This is a pheasant. This is a pheasant hen, sure. She, uh, she actually was presented to our wildlife clinic a couple of weeks ago after having been found near Route 10, near, near Monticello. She was just uh, debilitated by the side of the road, needing some TLC and some, you know, some supportive care. Uh, she had a pretty high parasite load, but we've been able to take care of her. But as you can see, she's extremely tame. Yes, so I'm gonna guess she's not gonna be fit to go back into the wild? Yeah, and in all likelihood, she didn't come from the wild. Oh. I was gonna say, if she's that tame, right, that's a sign that some of these, what we would consider wild yeah. animals, might have had human owners. Exactly, and what we know is that pheasants actually are not native to North America. They were Im oh. Im introduced from Asia back in the late 1800s, and they are one of the most common game birds that are raised for sport hunting um, and you have to have an Illinois state permit in order to raise them but many of them are raised and then released for hunting and and frankly to propagate the species in in this area okay because now and I'm thinking I've I've been driving along the road and I've seen pheasants you know like mm -hmm. in the ditch or out in the fields mm -hmm. but they look a little taller or um, well, a little you're more likely, colorful yeah. on their heads you're likely her. seeing the males, and the males oh. have the really long tails with the beautiful iridescent yes. colors and the red on the heads. Um, those are much more showy individuals. Pheasants have a unique um, social format in that they have one male and a harem of females, and those males will actually defend their ladies, oh. uh, and so they have to have that pretty plumage in order to attract all these girls. Interesting. <laughs> <Well>, chivalry <laughs> Valentine's Day. Lots of Valentine's. Yeah, so how, do you know how old she is? Or? There's no way to know. Uh, she is an adult bird. Um, likely she was hatched out um, in the springtime of whatever hatch year she was. Um, again, I, I suspect she was reared in captivity and then and then released. So is there, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just, you called her a game bird. So, mm -hmm. so do people hunt pheasants Absolutely. in this area? Yep, yeah. and in fact, the season, the hunting season for pheasants is just wrapping up. It, it runs from the beginning of November to mid-January. You just made it. Yeah, <laughs> just in time for spring. And a lot of people actually, um, make their yards, make their grounds suitable for pheasants because they like to have them there. They're great at taking care of uh, insects and pests. Oh. You know, what would make a suitable yard? Well, they like to have ground cover, but they don't like just solid grass. They like to have bare patches between the grass so that they can kind of hide. Think about quail and last time mm. you saw Bambi, you know, how they like to go underneath the grasses to avoid predators. Okay. You mentioned that someone had called you, mm -hmm. that they had seen her in the ditch. Mm -hmm. What do other people who might might see birds or other animals who have been maimed or might be in distress. Mm -hmm. How do they call you and under what circumstances would they call oh, you? That's a really great question. So anytime you see a wild animal that appears to be injured or ill, and usually you're going to know that because it's not avoiding you, you know, as you approach it or it's obviously hurt. Sure. Um, in those situations, first and foremost, make sure you're safe. Don't approach it if you don't feel that you can do so safely. But the best way to, to try to help that animal is to capture it into a box or a carrier using a blanket or a towel, a pair of heavy gloves and then bring it into the wildlife clinic. We're at the College of Veterinary Medicine in Urbana. We take it in free of charge, although we do use donations to support our work. Um, but we'll do everything we can to get them back to an appropriate environment. Yeah, and she's gonna be at home now with you. For a little while, yeah. we'll ultimately place her in a, in a a foster home. Oh, there you <laughs> a go. suitable place. There you All go, right. and maybe then, the, maybe then she'll get a name. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> she's just pheasant right now, yeah. which, is, which is okay with her. She's just happy she's on the mend. She and not on the menu. menu. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Dr. Hey. Whittington, thanks. You're welcome. Hey, if you want to connect with Dr. Whittington, be sure to visit CILiving.tv after today's show. Coming she's up. She's beautiful, Absolutely. isn't she?